In this video, we will predict two major economic events that have a high probability of occurring in this year of 2020. The first will predict what is the probability and timing over the remainder of the year 2020 that the United States stock market has realized its final peak as it then begins transitioning into a rapid correction phase downwards as the economic cycle moves into the next recession. And the second will predict what is the probability and timing over the remainder of the year 2020 that the United States has entered its next economic recession. We live in a mathematical construct. Everything in the universe can be simulated and events predicted by mathematical models. Mathematics is the language of nature. If you graph the number of any system, patterns emerge. Once a trend or condition is established, it tends to persist. Once a cycle begins, it tends to perpetuate itself. Each and every one of us is surrounded by, immersed in, and is also an active participant in a multitude of cycles occurring concurrently. Cycles can be found everywhere in the universe. There are no exceptions to this. Examples of cycles are the rise and fall of the ocean tides, the life cycles of living things, the great circle of the seasons, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, cycles of sunspots, the lunar cycle, the wax and wane of plants and animal populations, cycles of violence, the cycle of disease epidemics, the sleep cycle, the biorhythm cycles, the oxygen cycle, the cycle of day and night, and the rise and fall of empires. These are just a few examples of the cycles that we are familiar with and immersed in. Very briefly, before we get into the two economic predictions, we want to touch on the business cycle, otherwise known as the economic cycle. The vertical axis of this chart is the real gross domestic product of the country. This is the total value of goods produced and services provided in a country during one year. And the horizontal axis is the flow of time. As you can see, the business cycle consists of several phases, starting with the expansion phase of the economy of the country. This is the phase that the United States has been in for several years. It is a phase where there is an increase in employment, incomes, production, sales, and investments are booming. The second phase is the peak when the economy hits a snag, having reached the maximum level of growth. Prices hit their highest level and economic indicators stop growing. The third is the recession phase and is characterized by a period of contraction of the economy. This is called a recession and is characterized by rising unemployment, production slows down, sales start to drop because of a decline in demand and income becomes stagnant or decline. The fourth phase of the business cycle is the trough and this period marks the bottom of the recession. The fifth is the recovery phase, and this is where the economy starts to turn around. Low prices spur an increase in demand, employment and production starts to rise, and lenders start to open up their credit coffers. And then again, the cycle starts the expansion phase once the real gross domestic product starts to go above its previous peak of the last expansion. And this business cycle then continues to repeat itself. Notice that as long as the country's production continues to improve over time with better technologies and with an increasing population growth, the trend line will slope upwards to the right.
Every single U.S. recession over the past 50 years has been preceded by the inversion of the three-month and 10-year Treasury yield curve. The data for determining this yield curve is readily available from the U.S. Department of the Treasury and is easily calculated by using the three-month and 10-year column from their available yield rate data. The curve is calculated by subtracting the three-month Treasury rate from the 10-year Treasury rate. When the resulting numbers become negative, as shown in red, the yield curve is said to be inverted. This occurrence does not happen very often and is actually quite rare. For example, this has only happened seven times in the past half century and is a leading indicator that the tipping point in the stock market and economy is close to being reached. As you can see, the yield curve is starting to invert again in this month of February 2020, and yet not many people are paying attention to this. As you will soon see, the probability of both a stock market major correction and a following recession is close at hand. One final and important point should be stated. When the 50-day simple moving average of the three-month and 10-year Treasury yield curve data is used to determine inversions, there has never been a false recession indicator in the past 50 years. In other words, every single recession has been preceded by the inversion of the 50-day simple moving average of the three-month and 10-year yield curve data without a single false indication happening, going back as far as we have data. As an example, this is a graph of the 50-day simple moving average of the 10-year Treasury yield minus the 50-day simple moving average of the three-month Treasury yield over the past 20 years. The red line indicates the zero axis. Anything below that indicates an inversion of the yield curve. As you can see, we have had three inversions over this period of time. The latest inversion started on June 17th of 2019 using the 50-day simple moving average of the yield curve. In each of these two previous inversions, a recession followed those tipping point indicators. So the question is, will another recession follow the latest inversion? We strongly believe so. Here is another example with the same 50-day simple moving average of the yield curve above aligned with the S&P 500 stock market index performance during the same time period. Using the first day of the inversion as the tipping point indicator, we notice that the stock market peaks around those times and is followed by a major stock market correction immediately following afterwards. The economy then follows into a recession shortly after the peak in the stock market is realized. This is the pattern of the last 50 years, which we will now show you. Over the past 52 years, the United States has gone through seven business cycles and thus went through seven recessions. Here are the recession start and end dates for all of those downturns. Each of these recessions were a normal part of the cyclical nature of the universe and of the business cycle. For each of these recessions and the market correction that preceded those recessions, this is the data we meticulously gathered and checked against several sources. The column on the left is the starting date of the three month and 10 year yield curve inversion. The second column is the amount of time in months from the start of the yield curve inversion to the start of each recession. And the third column is the amount of time in months from the start of the yield curve inversion to the start of the stock market peak. With this data, we will now present the model for predicting the next two major economic events that are about to happen. Using this data set, we will now start by predicting when the stock market will peak and then begin its correction downwards. To start, we are first going to calculate the standard deviation of the rightmost column. This contains the historical data over the past seven business cycles of the number of months it took from the start of the yield curve inversion to the stock market peak. To begin, we will use the standard deviation equation. 
the data we need to do this calculation are X sub I, which is the start of the yield curve inversion to when the stock market peaks, X bar, which is the data set average, and N, which is the number of business cycles. Let's superimpose the data set on this table and begin transferring the data. So let's insert the inversion start dates and also insert the start of the inversion to the stock market peak data. And finally, let's insert the average time from the start of the inversion to the stock market peak data, which is 4.57 months. Calculating the difference between the observations and the sample mean, we get this column, and calculating the squares of each of the numbers in this column, we get these numbers. Adding up this rightmost column, we get a total of 457.68, which can now be substituted into the standard deviation equation. Since the number of data points is seven, the standard deviation is calculated at 8.73 months. From this, we can calculate and construct the following bell curve that is centered on its mean value of 4.57 months and that has a standard deviation of 8.73 months. From this bell curve, we can derive a probability distribution scale, which is shown above the bell curve to determine the most likely time frame that the stock market will make its final peak before we enter the next recession. And it's most likely to happen in the plus to minus one sigma portion of the bell curve, which is shaded in light blue. Aligning the zero month position of the bell curve with the first day of the yield curve inversion graph immediately below it, we can now assign a date that goes along with the probability distribution. The long red vertical arrow sweeps from left to right as time passes and denotes our current position on the probability distribution. And it indicates that right now, February 23rd, 2020, there is a 68% chance that we have already seen the peak of the stock market. And the chances quickly increase each month for example, there is an 86% chance in August of 2020 that the stock market will have already seen its peak on or before that month, and the chances go up even further as we continue into 2020. Boiling this all down, here is the table of the probability distribution for this major economic event. The probability percentages that are colored red indicate the most likely time frame that the market will peak and then begin its major decline as we move into the next recession. Based on this probability distribution, it is almost guaranteed that the stock market will peak and then fall significantly before the year of 2020 is over. Now let's use the center portion of this data set to predict when the next recession will begin. We will spare you the drudgery of computing the next standard deviation, so we will get right to the result. So the standard deviation of this 50 years worth of recession data is calculated at 3.83 months with an average of 11 months between the beginning of when yield curve inversions start to when recessions begin. From this, we can now construct the following bell curve that is centered on its mean value of 11 months and that has a standard deviation of 3.83 months. Again, from this bell curve, we can derive a probability distribution scale, which is shown above the bell curve, to determine the most likely time frame that the next recession will begin. As you can see, we have entered the plus to minus one sigma portion of the bell curve, which is shaded in light blue. Aligning the zero month position of the bell curve with the first day of the yield curve inversion graph immediately below it, we can now assign a date that goes along with the probability distribution. From that, this curve indicates that right now, February 23rd, 2020, there is an approximate 23% chance that a recession has started. But the chances quickly go up from here as we tick off each month. For example, there is an 85% chance in September 2020 that a recession will have already started and the chances go as high as 97% by the end of 2020. The one caveat is that usually we do not know that we are in a recession 
until a few months have passed and revisions to the economic data are made. This has been the norm for almost every single recession. Here is the table showing both major economic events. The probability that we have seen the peak of the stock market and the probability that the next recession has started. Again, the probability percentages that are colored red indicate the most likely time frame that the two major economic events will occur. Based on this probability distribution, it is almost guaranteed that the United States will be in a recession towards the end of 2020 and the stock market will peak soon and then fall significantly before the year of 2020 is over.